Okay. Oh, okay. Now it it seems okay now. <coughs> okay. So let's start. So welcome. Good morning to everyone. So I hope you had a good night after such a very delicious delicious dinner we had yesterday. So okay. So I'm. I hope you are fresh for the new day of the workshop. So. Uh, Today we will start with uh, the topic equipment qualification. Okay, so let's skip this. You already know me. So uh, I always let's say start with uh, the let's say obligatory or obligatory requirement for SSR two slash one. You already know most of the requirements. You know this document. It was already it has been already presented before. Uh, so in fact uh, it's. Let's say starting point, and then during the presentation, okay, we will describe in more details, okay, how to deal with this requirement because usually here we have some general requirement, and then we have to find out, okay, how to how to fulfill, how to how to deal with it. So requirement number thirty, so uh, qualification program shall be implemented for, let's say, or to verify that the items important to safety are capable to perform the intended functions when necessary, so when we need to, under prevailing environmental conditions and also throughout their design life. So it's, let's say, quite simple, it's quite obvious, but it has quite, let's say, large amount of impact. Eh? It's not very easy how to, let's say, fulfill this equipment. So, so st let's start with, okay, more explanation what, let's say, exactly the qualification means. So according to uh, the IEA glossary, qualification means generation of evidence and also maintenance of this evidence, which I would like to, let's say, stress out that it's not only, let's say, to generate the, the proof, but also to keep it, let's say, valid throughout the design life. So it's the evidence that the equipment will operate on demand, so basically when we need, when we need the equipment, it will operate under specified service conditions. So it means different environmental effects, different hazards, which can, let's say, influence the equipment. So we have to consider that. And uh, it will also meet performance requirements. So performance requirements, it means, for example, response time. For example, the pump has to be able to provide, I don't know, 250 liters per minute. So. Everything like this is, let's say, condensates or hidden in this qualification. So basically, we have to be able to prove that the equipment will work when we need it and under all, let's say, expected conditions, including, let's say, accidental conditions, and the equipment will do what we want it to do and uh, with the performance when, which was uh, defined and required. So everything, or well, not everything, but let's start with classification. You already uh, know about it, so I will not, let's say, describe it in details. Uh, just uh, to, let's say, emphasize that the classification is here not only to, let's say, identify the safety systems important to safety, but the, the main approach is to, to have a graduate approach because not all the equipment is, uh, let's say, so important. So for qualification, from the point of view of safety, we are interested in these items important to safety. We are not, let's say, it's not required to have qualified, not important equipment. Uh, because if they fail, so they should not have some negative impact on, on safety. But perhaps the plant such equipment is, for example, not important to safety, but it can be useful for the plant. So maybe some of the equipment can be also qualified in order to have, let's say, more smooth or, or more available systems and better availability and so on. But from the point of view of safety, we will deal with these systems. Okay, so the, it's clear that qualification has, let's say, direct connection with the plant safety. So as I have mentioned, and I think I will repeat it many times during the presentation, but uh, it's quite, let's say, basic concepts, that uh, during the qualification we have to, let's say, anticipate or assume or find out 
what will be the, let's say, significant operational or environmental stresses which uh, can influence the equipment. And the equipment has to be, let's say, qualified. It has to be immune to such, to such uh, events. So this events has to include also the design basis events. Uh, the problem is, okay, maybe you know that picture, it was, it's from Fukushima, so it's, if it's something beyond that, so then uh, the equipment uh, could fail. So after this event, you have already uh, learned that in the previous presentation from Marco, that uh, now we define something called uh, design extension conditions. So also we should, uh, let's say, consider that we should have also some equipment which should be able to deal also with uh, uh, DEC design extension condition uh, environmental conditions. So it's something beyond this concept. Uh, it's uh, not yet, let's say, entirely propagate to the all IEA documentation and standards, this, this new concept. But uh, you already know about it and you have to keep it in mind that also something more than this can exist and some equipment should be qualified also for such uh, uh, situations. Uh, the qualification is also very useful or one of the very important tools how to, let's say, fight some sort of common cause failure because it's clear that uh, such environmental events are very, let's say, clear event which can, let's say, uh, harm more equipment, possibly the whole plant. So if, if we, let's say, qualify the equipment properly, so we can avoid some, let's say, common cause fair caused by flooding, fires, and uh, let's say environmental conditions as well. So yeah, common cause failure, we will speak about it also during the other presentations with regard, with regard to electrical and uh, INC systems. So I think it's not necessary to spend a lot of time with this. Just uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, one of the, let's say, important source of common cause failure are the, let's say, environmental, environmental conditions. So, and the qualification is, is very useful to, to, to fight it. Okay, so what is the scope of the qualification? Uh, qualification itself, it's quite, let's say, broad topic and Quite often in different, when I will speak with different people or different designers and so on, sometimes it's not used very consistently because quite often under qualification, the people understand it's just, let's say, environmental qualification. But uh, from the point of view of, let's say, safety or specific safety requirements or IEA view, the qualification is much broader. So as I have mentioned before, so it's not only environmental qualification, but it's only uh, it's also uh, the proof of uh, the fact that the equipment will be able to provide the correct function, the needed function, uh, including the performance criteria. So in fact, it will work properly under different, let's say, external conditions. Let's say it it could be let's say organized in different ways. So sometimes, uh, for example, electromagnetic qualification can be sometimes, let's say, split into the environmental qualification or some of some part of that also to the external hazard because, so for example, lightning bolts eh, and things like that. Uh, sometimes the seismic qualification is, let's say, mentioned as a separate item and uh, under seismic is often, let's say, combination of qualification for vibrations and qualification for earthquakes, which earthquakes are external hazards. But for the point of view of qualification, it's, let's say, not very important to which bullet we will, let's say, put the stressor. The important thing is that we have to find everything what can influence the equipment. And we have to be able to prove that the equipment is good enough to survive these conditions. Nevertheless, if the condition is labeled as external hazard or uh, environmental qualification or whatever. And uh, I think there will be also another presentation with regard to internal and external hazards. So we will, uh, we will 
learn more details on, on this on this concept as well. So there's some of the terminology. So I think we don't need to spend a lot of time with this. So suitability and correctness. So it means I think it's quite clear that it will do what we need and the parameters will be as let's say required. Environmental conditions. So basically it's let's say external conditions to the equipment. So it's temperature, let's say some vibration, radiation and things like that. Uh, there's something sometimes, let's say some specific term, operational conditions. So these conditions are, let's say, things which are, let's say, dedicated or, let's say, bound directly with the equipment itself. So, with, so it's uh, derived from the, let's say, mechanical processes inside the equipment. So it's, it can vibrate itself. Uh, then we have, let's say, abnormal, or of course we have also normal conditions. Normal conditions means that, okay, everything is perfect, nothing special happens. There are the, let's say we are here, so we have normal conditions here, so it's, it's fine. We have abnormal conditions. Abnormal conditions are, let's say, conditions which are not so nice, but we can expect that it can happen. And we have to, let's say, assume that it can happen, perhaps not very often, but uh, it's, let's say, credible event. And it uh, usually happens, let's say, most often than, than accidents. Yeah? It's something like uh, 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 anticipated occurrence yeah? and, and, and things like that. So it can be power supply, some loss of power supply, or some switching during the loss of power supply that when we go from the, for example, off side grid to the diesel generators and, and, and so on. It can be some problems with uh, air conditioning systems. Uh, there can be some small leaks if the equipment is some, somewhere in above our the pipes. So in the plant we have a lot of, let's say, water pipes. So during the maintenance there could be some small leaks. So, so we have to, let's say, think about that and uh, also consider these abnormal conditions. Then we have, let's say, design basis events. So basically, these are accidents. From the point of view of qualification, usually these are, let's say, the, the, the most, let's say, dominant. So LOCA, loss of coolant accidents, or high energy line breaks. So basically, these types of, uh, let's say, accidents, they produce, produce so-called harsh environments. Harsh, it means that very, let's say, severe or extreme environmental conditions are, let's say, present. So this is the most, let's say, critical or most severe combination of uh, external conditions which we have to, let's say, consider if the equipment is intended to work for this event. So if we have equipment which has to be able to deal, for example, with LOCA accident, so it has to be able to survive the LOCA, yeah, because otherwise it's for nothing. Yeah. And uh, mild environments, mild environments are okay when nothing significantly happens. So it is, this is the situation where the equipment is 99.999% of its operation. Uh, also, uh, okay, we can also mention when we, let's say, investigate these uh, different, uh, let's say, environmental effects. So we can define some stressors. Stressor is, uh, let's say, some, let's say, negative influence on the equipment. So it could be temperature, radiation, pressure, and, and, and so on. Uh, then uh, there are stressors, uh, let's say, from the, let's say, operation of the equipment itself. So it could be, for example, some mechanical cycling. The equipment is, equipment is switched on and off, often uh, internal vibrations and things like that. So, of course, the equipment has to be able to survive its, let's say, own operation. And uh, we have uh, internal or external hazards. Uh, this includes uh, fire, floodings, extreme weather, seismic events, uh, internal hazard uh, could be missiles. So it means part of uh, high-speed rotating equipment. If it fails, it can produce missiles, falling objects, and things like that. So now, just very briefly, uh, we will have a look on, let's say, different stressors. Uh, I think it's quite clear, but just to, let's say, summary. So the most prevailing temperature. So temperature, 
Uh, it can change the material characteristics. Uh, here's one example. Uh, in fact, this picture was taken in, uh, in my plant. So here's a uh, terminal wiring block. So it looks pretty, pretty normal, pretty fine. But uh, when uh, you have uh, the thermovision picture, so you can see this, there is some problem here. And uh, when it was, let's say, dismantled, so uh, this is the result of uh, the plastic, um, let's say, junction. And you can see how it was uh, thermally degraded. Uh, it was cracked, melted, and, and so on. So the question here can be, so was the equipment, let's say, not qualified properly when something like this happened? The answer is no, it was qualified properly because it, this, let's say, rack is in a mild environment. Uh, it was qualified for the mild conditions uh, because uh, no, for example, local or help conditions could be in this, in this place. So it's perhaps for, I don't know, 26 degrees for uh, operation. It was also qualified for, for some, let's say, abnormal conditions. So it was considered that, okay, air conditioning uh, could not work. There could be some, let's say, very warm weather. So it was qualified to survive, I don't know, one week in 38 degrees or something like that. But then maybe during the maintenance, some, the, the wire was not connected properly. And in fact, it, uh, the equipment was operated outside the box, outside the envelope, which was, let's say, uh, qualified. And uh, this is a very important thing that we will speak about it later as well, that uh, the qualification is only, not only one step process to qualify the equipment, but we have to be careful to keep the equipment in the, in the envelope, to keep it in the box. So and, uh, when we not do it properly, so something like that can happen because the equipment is not designed to survive such stresses. Okay, one of, at a nuclear power plant we can find nuclear radiation. Uh, you already learned about the different, let's say, results of radiation in the previous presentation, so I will not speak about it in, in details. Uh, I will just mention one specific thing. Uh, semiconductor devices, so basically digital systems are very susceptible to the radiation because the, the silicon chip uh, could be, let's say, very easily degraded through the ionization. So you have to be very careful about the digital, digital systems uh, under, let's say, radiation environment. Okay, we have pressure. So excessive pressure could cause some, let's say, structural failure of the device, it, it, it can rupture, it, it's clear. We have vibrations, vibrations could be caused by the operation itself, uh, the steam line pipes could, could vibrate uh, because there is a high velocity of the, of the fluid inside, uh, there can be earthquake, earthquakes and things like that. So we don't want to equipment to get loose, uh, for example, or to wear out and, uh, and, and, and so on. We have water at nuclear power plants. There is a lot of water, so and it's clear water could cause corrosion. It could, let's say, degrade electric characteristic of the of the equipment, uh, weaken the physical characteristic, and so on. And uh, the very severe combination of water and heat is the steam. So typically, in the help conditions, we have a lot of steam. Uh, which combines temperature degradation and the humidity together. We have also chemicals. Uh, this is just one example. This picture is from a nuclear power plant. It's a U.S. nuclear power plant, Davis Bessie. I think in 2002 they find out that they have very significant corrosion. It's uh, the reactor head. And uh, when it interacts with uh, the boron acid, which is used in the primary circuit as a, let's say, neutron inhibitor, so it uh, causes very, let's say, significant corrosion. Yeah, so also, uh, this is also the chemicals, even if there are not a lot of them in uh, the power plants, but uh, they are used and we have to consider also this, these situations. 
Okay, operational stressors. Yeah, we have already mentioned it could be vibration, so it's connected directly with the equipment itself. Uh, there can be different loading conditions. There can be variation of, the, for example, input power. So different, for example, when the, they are switching of to the, for example, backup power supply. So there can be some uh, short-term uh, power offs or, or some degradation of the input voltage or frequency and things like that. Uh, so, so these are the things which can happen, and uh, the equipment has to be, let's say, able to survive such such conditions. It's it's clear that it's uh, this is very general generalist, and we have to let's say assess for every specific equipment based on the location and intended functions. So, we have spoken about let's say different influence on different stressors and things like that. So. Now, how to do the qualification? So now we know that we have a little, uh, we have a lot of many stressors and problems and things to do. So how how to deal with it? So here's let's say some methods which are used. Usually they are let's say used for the qualification combination of of these methods. Usually not all of them, but combination of some of them, which are most let's say useful for the that's a specific situation. For every situation, maybe something else is a little bit better. But what is, let's say, most important or most uh, significant? So it's usually the type test. So the type test, uh, we will mention it also later. We will test some typical character, characteristic, let's say, configuration of the equipment. So we prepare some sample, so typical sample of the equipment, and we will test it for different stressors to, to see how this equipment will, will cope with uh, the uh, assumed uh, conditions. Uh, usually, we also have some testing of the equipment, let's say, the specific equipment when it was, for example, installed or supplied to the plant, because we have to check also the performance requirement, the correctness of the functions, and things like that. Usually, we have to add some analysis because, for example, not everything is perhaps is possible to test. So perhaps uh, there have to be some analysis to, let's say, evaluate or let's say think about some, let's say, operating experience or some more specific conditions, which, for example, cannot be tested. And very often we have evaluation of uh, the manufacturer producing process. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, if if I speak from the point of view of utility, of the operator of the plant, so usually I, or it's most often that I don't do the testing. Yeah? Usually, this is done. There are, there are two, two possibilities. I either pay some external company to do the tests, so I buy the equipment and put it to some laboratory to test it for me, or usually during the design. I, let's say, ask the designer or the, let's say, supplier of the system that, okay, I need that the equipment has to uh, have the qualification documentation supplied together with the equipment, and it means that you have to test it for me. So the supplier, together with the, uh, let's say, standard documentation, do the tests. But me, as a, let's say, operator, I have to check and evaluate if it was done properly, so very often, for example, the people from the plant can, let's say, participate on the testing to see how it's going. They can, let's say, participate in various stage of manufacturing process to see that the supplier do what he promised to do and that he keeps and follows, for example, the manufacturing codes and things like that. Yeah, but usually the operator, the nuclear power plant, usually don't have the capacity to to the, they don't have usually the laboratory to, to do the tests, yeah? So it's usually some third, third company, yeah? It's okay? Okay. Yeah, so evaluation of manufacturing production process, you have already learned about it. It's important for specific equipment and also for complex equipment. If the equipment is quite complex, 
for example, some digital system uh, together with the software and things like that. So perhaps not everything is possible to test at the end when the equipment is, let's say, built. But we have to also check that during the process everything was done properly. Yeah. So this could be also part of the qualification. Okay, so let's speak a little bit about uh, uh, the type testing. So the type testing is, uh, let's say, preferred qualification method, especially for the complex equipment. So it means that, for example, for simple equipment, perhaps you can use operatic experience or some analysis, but if it's more complex, it's usually difficult to, let's say, calculate what exactly will happen with the equipment under severe stresses. And, uh, of course, for a harsh environment. Yeah, so, again, if you need to evaluate what will happen with the equipment when it's, for example, 300 uh, degrees water or steam, so it's usually necessary to, to, to test it. Uh, so the type test is the test of uh, some sampling. So from the different, let's say, equipment which perhaps should be used at the plant, you build some samples, some typical uh, representation of the equipment, which is then subject to the testing. Because it's clear that after the tests, the equipment could, couldn't be used at the plant, yeah? because it uh, survived some very harsh, let's say, conditions. So then usually you have to, let's say, just use it, use it for some other testing, but you, can, you can't not install it to the plant because it's old and it's degraded already. So that's why, that's why it's only, only samples are used for the, for the, for the type testing. The test approaches which could be used is uh, the best one would be the simultaneous, let's say, uh, influence or mm, influence of all possible stressors which uh, we need to test or which we need to see. It would be nice, but as far as I know, there is no commercial app which is able to simultaneously uh, perform the, I don't know, seismic uh, help and local conditions at, at once. So it would be nice, but I think it's not, not feasible just now. So usually these two approaches are used. So it's sequential testing. So it means that the, the type equipment is uh, subject to the sequence of different stressors. And uh, then we analyze, okay, what, what the result is. Or something called separate testing. So it means that, for example, I have two, two samples, and one sample is used, for example, for, I don't know, thermal degradation, seismic tests, and things like that, and another is used, for example, for electromagnetic compatibility testing. Uh, so these are, and sometimes it, it, it's combined, uh, but it's clear that you also have to consider that uh, it's not, let's say, ideal state, and uh, there are some, uh, some assumptions have to be made. So here it is, the possible test sequence, how it could look like. It's clear that the, the, let's say the test sequence can be or is specific for the specific equipment and for the specific, let's say, anticipated, let's say, environmental or external conditions. But the, usually it starts with uh, the inspection and basic testing. So when we have the type sample, so we have to, let's say, evaluate the, the starting point of, of the test to, to check that the equipment works as it should. Then what is done is called accelerated aging. So it's, uh, it means that we try to bring the equipment at the end of its, let's say, designed life. Because we have to be sure that the equipment at the plant will work no, not only when it is new, but it has to be able to work also when it is old. So if the, let's say, design life of the equipment is, let's say, 10, 15 years, so after 10 or 15 years, it has to be able to provide the safety functions when uh, we need it. So uh, accelerated aging is uh, done usually by the combination of uh, uh, the thermal degradation, so it could be combination of dry heat, 
damp or wet heat, or the cold. So we bake the equipment, we freeze it, we in, put it into the radiation environment. Uh, we can uh, repeatedly switch it on and off yeah, to, to try to wear out the equipment. And after this process, then we test the real, for example, accident conditions, the, the real harsh environment under which the equipment should be able to operate. Uh, so it could be, let's say, the, the seismic qualification, so different vibration. It could be simulation of radiation accident. So it's, for example, if it has to be able to survive the local accident, so it means steam, hot water, and radiation, temperature and pressure accident simulation. There could be equipment which have to be used for some, for example, design extend, extension conditions. So it has to be able to survive, for example, in harsh conditions for a long time. So we have to consider and test it to, to see uh, how the equipment, and to, to prove that the equipment will be able to operate also under this, these conditions. Okay, so seismic testing is one of the, let's say, specific tests which is done. So uh, safety related equipment has to be able to withstand the effects of earthquakes. You will learn about the earthquakes, I think, in the presentation about uh, external hazards. So it's, it's different for each plant. It depends where, where the plant is, let's say, situated. Uh, usually for the equipment, uh, there is also some specific seismic categorization. It could be also different throughout the member states. Uh, but just let's say to give you some example, you can uh, distinguish if the equipment has to be able to operate, for example, during and after seismic event. So if it has to be able to provide the function if it is shaking and after the shakes, let's say, disappears, so it still has to be able to, to operate. But there are also equipment with, which perhaps we don't need to, let's say, operate, but we just have to be sure that during the seismic event they don't get loose and harm other equipment. So that they are just, let's say, well attached. And uh, when there is a seismic, we don't need them, but we just don't want to, let's say, fall apart and harm the equipment which we really need. So uh, the methods used for the seismic testing so it's, the, the, let's say, testing itself. So it's usually the, the shake table is the example how it can look like. So it's some, some let's say, platform on the hydraulic pistons which can really shake quite violently. I think this one up to 7G. On YouTube, you can find quite nice videos how it will look when it operates. So it's quite, quite interesting. Uh, usually, you have to, or for some specific, uh, let's say, cases, you can, let's say, deal just with analysis. So perhaps if you just would not like to know if the equipment under the vibration falls down from the wall, so perhaps just the analysis will be enough to, to check that the, let's say, attachment of the equipment is good enough or not. And operating experience. Yeah, for, for seismic, there are some operating equipment, uh, operating experience. Because, for example, the palms, valves, and so on are used also in other industries. And some of them, let's say, have experience with some, let's say, earthquakes or some vibrations. So the operatic equipment for, in some specific situations can be also be useful. So the testing itself, it could be, let's say, single frequency. So this is... So just, just, uh, this is just for some, let's say, specific, for example, if the equipment is attached to, to some pipe which vibrates on just one specific frequency, so I can perhaps test it on this, this limited frequency. And also there could be multi-frequency tests, so I test the whole spectrum of different, uh, different frequencies of vibrations. Uh, yeah, I use this shake, shake tables, uh, as we saw in the previous slide. And uh, these uh, equipment or shaking tables, shake tables can be operated in one, two, or three axes. Yeah? So we can have, let's say, different, let's say, test configurations. Uh, as, as I have mentioned, we can use analysis. 
so usually the analysis is useful to let's say examine the structural capability, but again with the more complex equipment, usually we have to do the testing itself yeah, to, to see what, what will happen inside the equipment. And also, let's say the operating experience I have already mentioned. Okay, another group of testing is uh, electromagnetic compatibility testing. This is usually specific for electric or let's say electric so electrical systems. So this is to, to evaluate the impact of electromagnetic inter interference or radio frequency interference on the, on the equipment. So again, there are, let's say, different possible tests. And for each of these tests, there are, let's say, several international standards which describe, okay, how, how we can do that, yeah, what are the conditions, and, and things like that. So this, every, every one of that is some scientific field itself. So just to have really, let's say, brief, let's say, in summary, what these tests could, could, let's say, do. So susceptibility tests. So it means that we, let's say, check if the equipment can survive uh, uh, the signals or some interference, which can be, uh, let's say, coupled onto the, for example, input power, power leads or signal cables, or some radiated electromagnetic interference from, from other sources. It's clear that uh, at nuclear power plant we can have these uh, phenomenons because there are large uh, motors which are, for example, switched on and off, which can, let's say, produce some, uh, let's say, uh, noise to the, to the electric grid. We have surge tests, so it's the ability to survive the, let's say, high energy over voltage. So, it could be also be caused by, for example, switching of very large, let's say, equipment, or when there is a lightning. So it could be also for external hazard. Uh, we can have uh, electrically fast transients or burst tests. So it's again the ability to survive the very, let's say, fast um, transients of of energy. Um, for some equipment, we let's say, investigate or some, let's say, electrostatic discharge. So usually when, uh, let's say, uh, the operator or the maintenance personnel have to detach specific part of the equipment, so uh, there can be some electrostatic discharge of the equipment, and it, it, so it has to be able to survive. And also there are let's say, emission tests or emissions tests. So these tests are about, uh, let's say, the ability of equipment not to harm its environment. Yeah? So all, I also would like to have the equipment which is not very hostile to the other equipment in the plant. Yeah? So I can test it uh, and to check how my equipment behave. So this is an example of, for example, one laboratory. So it's anti-reflection walls, some antenna equipment. So it's one possibility how it can be tested. Such some of the, these tests can be also done at plant directly. Um, so these were some, let's say, possibilities of how the type tests could look like. So let's speak also about the analysis. Usually some analysis is, uh, let's say, very important. Because when we test the equipment, so very often we test it not under, let's say, completely same conditions, but only similar conditions. So we have to then evaluate, okay, at my plant there will be some, let's say, more specific, so I have to check if I am still in the envelope. Uh, maybe the item, because in the type tests, maybe the item or the equipment I test is not exactly the same, so perhaps it's similar, or similar equipment was tested before, and I would like to check if it applies also for my new equipment. I can, let's say, evaluate the operating experiments. Maybe some of the tests are not let's say complete, because I, I'm not able to simulate everything perhaps or check everything, so then I have to extrapolate and uh, think like that, okay, so I test just this and okay, well, how the result could be uh, under some specific conditions. So this is not easy. It requires, let's say, different, let's say, scientific fields to, 
think about like I don't know vibrations uh, about uh, uh, reheat degradation and things like that. But it's something which is very often necessary to 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 do. Okay. So I have already mentioned, uh, and this is very important, that the qualification is a process. It's not just, let's say, one step and I'm done forever. It, it, in fact, it starts with the design. So during the, for example, plant design or system design, I have to, let's say, gather all the design inputs, the classification, the requirements for the functions, uh, for the performance requirements. Uh, I need to find the equipment configuration and location and based on that, okay, what can be the, let's say, the service conditions under not only nor normal but also abnormal or accidental situations. So I have to, let's say, put all these things together and pull out the, let's say, criteria for the, for the qualification, for the testing. And it's, it's quite complex task. And then, let's say, something called, let's say, qualification evaluation or qualification verifi verification uh, takes part. Very often, this step is called the qualification. So when the people speak about qualification, so they usually means just the, the, this one. But we have to be careful that we also have to, let's say, pull out the information from all, all of these sources to be able to create the equipment qualification program. So it means we have to be able uh, to prepare the, let's say, what test will be done, uh, to perform the testing, to analyze the results. And at the end, we have to be able to document everything, okay? to put everything on paper, uh, to, to, to check that everything was correctly done, that everything was complete and uh, approved. But with this, we are not done. Then we install the equipment and we have the operation. And this is a very important part that we have to be able to keep the equipment in the qualification, let's say envelope, in the qualification box. And according to my experience, this is the major source of uh, the problems. Uh, usually you qualify the equipment properly, but during the maintenance or replacement, you perhaps use the spare part which was not let's say, intended to such, for, for example, specific conditions, or during some design change, you forget to, let's say, consider the qualification, or you place the equipment to a little bit different location and you don't think about the qualification. So to keep the qualification valid during the whole, whole operation is a very, let's say, demanding, challenging task, but it has to be done. Yeah? So I really would like to point out that with this step, we are not done. We have to be able to keep the qualification during the whole plant or the system lifetime. Okay. So I think uh, this is just summary of what I have already said. So from the, let's say, design basis and uh, performance requirement and, and so on. So we have to, let's say, create the acceptance criteria. So I, I think... Uh, it's not necessary to, to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, the environmental qualification, usually for more complex equipment, is usually done uh, or testing of individual pieces. Because it's usually not possible to, to build the, the whole plant or the, the whole, let's say, quite large uh, system. So it's what, what is usually done, so we test specific equipment and then on the plan we put it to, to we, we put it together and then we have to let's say analyze or evaluate that when we put it together that okay the qualification is is still 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 valid that our assumption is is, is, is correct uh, so and this has to be considered in the equipment qualification program yeah that okay we we will have to test the equipment piece by piece step by step and then integrate it for example at plant so uh, this, this is a very important a assumption. Yeah, we have to consider different service conditions. I, I think it, it, it's, it's clear. What is very often, what is usually done, so at the plant, you usually, let's say, consider these normal 
abnormal or accident conditions, uh, not, let's say, for every specific, let's say, location or every specific point at the plant, but for the set of, uh, for example, structures, for example, for the whole building or for the whole floor. So, for example, the, in the containment, you find out what is the most severe conditions, and then every equipment which you put to the containment is the subject of the specific set of conditions for the whole structure. Yeah, it's, let's say, quite, it's some, let's say, practical approach how to, how to do that. So we have usually the set of environmental conditions for some entire structure, building, or floor, or, or the specific room. And then when we deal with this room, so we can, let's say, just use the conditions which we, for example, prepare before or in another project. Yeah, this is just an, an example. If when you have two different equipment, so perhaps the, the, this is the exam, example of coercion of heterogenic wealth between two different, let's say, uh, materials. So this is just example that when you qualify the equipment piece by piece and then you, let's say, connect or integrate it at the plant, so you have to consider that there can be some, let's say, specific interfaces which can have some, let's say, specific characteristics as well. Okay, the qualification, evaluation, or verification. Yeah, we have, let's say, mentioned this. So this is the, let's say, the qualification program, the testing, the evaluation of the testing. So we have already mentioned this, these things. What I have already mentioned, but this is what is important. Uh, the test results are often, let's say, we test it in some, let's say, envelope of, of conditions. So again, during the analysis, we have to find out if my, if my specific conditions in, for example, the specific room are inside this envelope. So it means, let's say, ad additional analysis very often is needed. And what is really very important, we have to be sure that when we test, for example, type test the equipment, and it, we analyze and everything is okay, so we have to be sure that uh, the manufacturer or supplier, let's say, keeps the materials, the processes, as it was before, because any variation, for example, different material can be used or some different procedure for, for example, uh, constructing of the equipment can influence the qualification conclusion. So this is very, very important. And from my experience, also there were some problems when the equipment was, let's say, qualified properly. And then later, the manufacturer used a little bit different material, expect that everything will be OK, but it wasn't OK. In some specific conditions, for example, uh, uh, due to radiation, the material degrades. The manufacturer do, doesn't expect that. Because perhaps they, the manufacturer perhaps is not directly connected to the nuclear, so perhaps they do not consider, let's say, nuclear radiation as a potential, let's say, stressor for this uh, equipment. So you have to be sure that it's still the manufacturer, the installation configuration, and things like that are still uh, keep the equipment in the qualification envelope, and if something will change or would change, you have to be able to, let's say, check and evaluate if it has some impact on the qualification. And it's clear everything has to be documented. In nuclear, you have a lot of documents on everything. It's, it's clear. Because then it's used, for example, by regulator authority yeah, and uh, or also for, for doing some, let's say, later design modifications. So we have to be able to find out what are the, let's say, assumptions and test results have been. So this is the, let's say, possible, uh, let's say, summary or possible, let's say, content of uh, the plant-specific evaluation. It's just, as an example for you, I will not, let's say, I will not read everything. We have already mentioned everything, so we start with some criteria and standards, we have testing, we have to, uh, let's say, also in, 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 let's say implement some, some margins. So if the equipment has to survive uh, 300 degrees, 
so it will be better to test it with some, let's say, margin, because always there are some uncertainties. So uh, you have already know about the margins. So, so it applies also for these types of testing and uh, assumptions. Uh, okay. So then uh, you can uh, you can read it later. So uh, what is important? Also, when uh, the equipment is, let's say, qualified at the laboratory, everything is analyzed, evaluated, okay, it's perfect. So then it came, it came to the plant and we have to install it. So also the on-site installation can affect the qualification. So very often during the batch project, it, it's, then it, it's found that, for example, the, the equipment was put to a little bit different location because it, okay, during the installation process, it was found out that perhaps there was some error in the documentation or perhaps it was from, for some reason, it was the better solution. But if we put it to another place, so we have to be able to, to check if it's, if it's okay from the point of view of qualification because now the equipment could be more, uh, let's say, vulnerable to, to some for example, leaks from the pipe or there could be some crane where it could be some, let's say, falling of the objects and anything like that. Also, it's, it, it, it can influence how I install the equipment. So for, for example, if the equipment should be installed, for example, in some, let's say, a high energetic pipe which has some vibration and I tested the equipment for, let's say, one axis vibration and it was okay, but then I, let's say, attached or I installed the equipment in the different direction. So then the vibration could be in the, let's say, different axis, which was not tested, and it can lose, let's say, the equipment can, let's say, really very quickly go outside the qualification range because it was not tested for that. So, so also such, let's say, small details can affect the qualification, and that, that's why it's very, let's say, challenging to, to, to keep the qualification, let's say, valid, also during the installation and operation itself. So it's important that, for example, for the quali from qualification, one of the results can be some recommendation how to install the equipment. There could be some specific requirements, how to install, how to attach, and, and, and so on. And also during the plant modifications, you have always some modifications, you have to change something, so always you have to think about the qualification. Because even if the change is quite, let's say, small, it can have significant impact. And we had really big problems when, for example, uh, the different type of material was used, for example, for some screws, for some small, let's say, device, and it can harm the, let's say, integrity of the whole equipment. So this is a very challenging thing. Maintenance, we have already mentioned. So the maintenance, rather activities, which ensure that the equipment will be available and it will be capable to perform the function. Uh, also, there could be some specific maintenance activities prescribed from the qualification process. So for example, during the qualification, it could be found out that some part of equipment degrad degradates more quickly. So there could be, for example, some prescription, some, let's say, uh, obligation to, for example, to change some part of the equipment, for example, some gasket, some ceiling, for example, every five years and things like that. So there could be some, let's say, equipment qualification required maintenance. Or on the other hand, there could be also in some cases that equipment, qualifi equipment qualification can, let's say, prohibit certain type of, let's say, maintenance. For example, if I have some integrated circuit, so perhaps after the testing, it's forbidden to, let's say, change the specific components on the integrated circuit because perhaps I will not, let's say, follow exactly the, the process. I will harm some, let's say, surface uh, layer of, uh, of, 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 the, of the integrated circuit and things thing like that. So, so what I wanted to say that the equipment qualification, the results from the testing and analysis could have some impact not only on installation, but also on the maintenance itself. And we have to, let's say, know about it and let's say, be aware that such things can, and in reality, it, 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 it happens. Okay, spare parts. 
During the maintenance, we use also the spare parts, but it's clear, but usually the equipment is not able to survive all the, let's say, design life forever, so we have to, time to time, to exchange something. Perhaps it's required by the qualification, so we have to replace something in some specific period. Or sometimes it's, let's say, fails and we have to uh, replace it. What very often happens, that very often the spare parts are not, let's say, bought or used for original equipment manufacturer. There can be different reasons for that. One of the usually most often reason is that, for example, the OEM stops to produce the equipment or the specific part. So we have to find another source of this spe specific part. So perhaps we find another manufacturer or we can find some, let's say, commercial product which can be used. So uh, these two terms are used, commercial of the shelf or commercial grade item. I think this one, this second one is more US term. What is important when we use spare parts, I still need to preserve my qualification. So it means when I use the spare part, I have to be sure that, okay, when I introduce something new to my equipment, that the equipment still is inside the, let's say, qualified envelope as it was tested, as it was evaluated, and as it was, for example, licensed by, by the regulator. So it means I have to evaluate the differences in the material, in the fabrication process, uh, in the, for example, performance or design requirements, and I have to be very careful when I use this commercial item, because these are used, usually such manufacturers do not care about the nuclear, and if I won't use it, I can. There are situations where I can, and it's possible, but I have to be able to qualify the item. And I have to check all of this, and perhaps I need to rerun some type tests again to, to be sure that everything is, everything is correct. Okay, the use of, let's say, these commercial items, it's not the, let's say, bad thing. It sometimes it can be useful or, or let's say necessary because uh, one thing is that, for example, the original products are not on the market anymore. And very often the commercial products are, let's say, well tested. There is a lot of operational experience. So it can happen that the commercial product is, let's say, maybe let's say better tested than some specific equipment which was designed just let's say one batch for the specific equipment for the specific requirement uh, where no operating experience exists so there are cases when it can be useful to use it but the disadvantage of this is that these commercial items are usually not let's say produced specifically for nuclear then there is the problem with qualification and maybe some of them it's not able we are not able to qualify them because uh, the requirements are quite for example mm, strict and also this equipment could have some let's say other functions some something it, because it wasn't designed for some specific equipment but for some let's say commercial market so we have we have to be also evaluated the the performance criteria and, and, and the functions it, it, it itself because don't forget that the qualification is not only about environment but it's also about let's say performance criteria and the, the function which is let's say provided by the equipment okay so one other thing uh, Aging, aging management. I, I think there will be also one specific presentation on, on aging, I, I think. So I, I, I will not, I think, go into, into many details, but just to have some, some idea. So we have to, let's say, determine what the design life of our items is. We have already mentioned that during the, let's say, qualification testing, we do some accelerated aging and, and, and things, like, things like that. 
that we have to be able to prove that the equipment is also good enough at the end of its intended life. So this is the let's say specific safety requirement that we have to ensure the capability of the items to perform the necessary safety functions for throughout their whole design life. So not only when they are new, but also when they are old. Okay, so how to, let's say, how to find out or how to determine the, the, the age of the equipment. So what is usually done, so, so you have to identify the, the, the aging stressors. So what is, let's say, most harmful for your equipment <clears throat> and uh, what can, let's say, degrade your equipment. And uh, based on that, you define some, let's say, aging mechanism. So for example, it could be some wear out, uh, corrosion or uh, whatever. And then you use either some, some accelerated aging text test. So we have spoken about it. So you, you let's say, put the equipment under the conditions of this let's say aging stress source, which can be the heat, steam, and, and things like that. Or perhaps you use some analytical methods to, to calculate, okay, how it will behave after some time of life. And based on these, let's say, testing and assumptions, you estimate or establish the, the qualified life of the, of, the, of the equipment. But what is really important, the qualified life, it's, okay, it's some, let's say, estimation, and we have to be able to, let's say, survive, to, to survive, to, to, to check if the assumptions made here are, let's say, correct and, and valid during the operation. So usually, based on these assumptions, we define some, let's say, surveillance activities or some replacement activities. So we have to check that, okay, what we, what we think that, okay, the aging degradation will be, so we have to check if it's if it's valid because it can happen that the equipment okay will be in let's say nice normal conditions for all the time so perhaps it can survive a little bit longer or on the other hand the conditions might be worse than we expected and then perhaps uh, the qualified life of the specific equipment will be shorter so it's important thing to be able to let's say evaluate and to check that these assumptions are, are still still valid. So let's say some, some summary. The aging management together with let's say equipment qualification program, let's say it basically improve the reliability of the plant systems. So it's it's clear that okay if the equipment survive different uh, external conditions, so it's more reliable, so it has impact on the on the on the plant safety. Uh, but uh, as I have mentioned and I repeat it many times, I'm sorry for that, but it's uh, repeated also in the IA documentation in many places and it's repeated in everywhere, but still it's, let's say, major source of the problems according to my experience at, at plant that we have to, this high reliability is achieved no, not only from the, let's say, initial qualification, but also using, the, let's say, preventive maintenance, which can be prescribed by the qualification, some condition, mon condition monitoring, so we have to check under which condition or, when, let's say, the equipment is operating. Uh, and uh, we have to have be able to, to correct if something is, for example, if the equipment is, uh, for example, degraded uh, much more than we expect, so we have to be able to let's say, replace or, or, let's say, fix it. So, and as I have mentioned, the information from the maintenance, uh, let's say, monitoring of the equipment, uh, surveillance of the equipment can be used for, let's say, increase or decrease uh, the qualified life of the, of the component. Yeah? In, in, in both ways, you, you learned that, for example, for a reactor vessel, that usually the trend is to, let's say, extend the life, uh, so we, let's say the stressors are perhaps less significant than it was expected, for example, in, 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 uh, uh, in before, but uh, there could be both ways. Some equipment can be, let's say, uh, 
the, the designed life could be decreased as well. Okay, so I think this is the last slide. What is important, the qualification process, as we have seen, is very complex. There are many different, let's say, companies, or many different stakeholders, and many, many very broad spectrum of activities. So qualification is, let's say, the impact of qualification is during the design, manufacturing, procurement, uh, engineering, installation, maintenance, periodic testing. So everything has to be, let's say, under quality assurance. Yeah? We have to, let's say, describe how it works. We have to be sure that all these, let's say, all these people, all these groups are able to talk to each other, to share the information, because as uh, we have seen, it has impact so from the design it, or the initial qualification. It can be some impact on maintenance or installation. During the periodic testing, we can find something which can have impact on the, for example, production quality and things like that for, for the spare parts and, and, and so on. So the quality assurance is very important. It's everywhere. And for the equipment qualification, it's very important very important part of the of the process. Okay, so at the end, this is just for for your information. There is some some list of references you can use to to get more more details. It's a very broad topic, and that's it.